Good afternoon, ma'am. It's good to see you again. You all right there, ma'am? Looks like you get yourself in some more trouble again. Trouble, just you know, uh, uh, just a bit of a uh, trouble, I guess. Hi, <laughs> uh, uh, Dolly, why do you look so familiar? Is your name Maria? Hi, hi. Maria, I think you will have two sides to a coin. Either you realize or, or you're playing dumb, either one, but. I do apologize when we went for a tumble off the edge there. I mean, you know, you kind of just left me while I was crying of pain on the floor. Injured on my, <coughs> my leg. Hey, I, I, it's... it's uh, I do apologize about that, but I had also an unfortunate encounter with three of those folks over there, so I had to make my way out of there. It was me, or you, and I chose me. As any wise man would choose themselves over others they do not know. Or woman at that, I'd imagine. Oh. So you just left me with a deputy? Well, I'm assuming you're fine considering they didn't arrest you. At least I don't think they did. Well, they didn't. They were asking questions about you. Oh, I didn't really know much about you, so there's nothing really to tell. I well, just figured you were in a rush somewhere. I was in a rush, especially once I seen them. What were they asking about, by the way, if you don't mind me prying, of course? Well, if I can recall, I think they called... I'm not sure if it was them that called you a scam artist or it was another group of people. Is that so? Another group of people have been talking about me as well. What, what do you know about me now, ma'am? Seems like you've let on to knowing more than you said before. Well, I haven't really asked much about you. Uh, but if people are calling you a scam artist, um, it'd be rude for me to believe them because I haven't even spent a day with you. They will say all kinds of things when they're angry or so about something or another. Besides, there's been a lot of, I would say, stories going about that aren't so accurate. It's how it goes. One man tells a story and it changes to the next man and so on. Now, Maria, I'm right. Is your name correct, Maria? Hi. Are you aware that you have two sides of a coin for a personality by a chance? Oh, what do you... Uh, what do you mean? I think you're either playing dumb or you really don't know, but I think you're playing dumb. You have two sides, it seems to be. One side is real aggressive and kind of, uh, I guess, more well-held, and you're more of a timid, uh, scared type, it seems. I think you know that. I imagine that's why you're out this far, because in society, you're probably frowned upon when the other side comes out. From what I can tell, and what I've gathered and put together from what I've seen every time I've met you, you make quite a mess sometimes, would I be right to assume that. Now, I should mention I have no care or want to do anything about that. That's your business. I just find it intriguing that every time I meet you, you're a different person. I don't know what you heard. I know what I am, and I know what I'm not. And I'm, I'm, I'm not... I don't hurt people. You don't, but the other one does. Beat up three you men in the saloon. <laughs> well, I haven't met her, so you know she doesn't exist to me. Well, aren't you a tangled ball of yarn? Why are 
are you so interested? Well, not every day you see somebody of two personalities walking about, especially out here on the middle of nowhere on Tumbleweed. So, I just put two and two together. I imagine that you come out this far because you have your own problems as well. But, merely out of curiosity and boredom, myself, if you do, see, if you do so need to know. The only reason I'm out here is because Sheriff Roof ruined my life. He did now. Well, how did he ruin your life? I got people in Blackwater accusing me of things I didn't do. I got people... I got people in Strawberry. And from the start, Sheriff Roof started accusing me. Way before people started accusing me of things. He accused me of being a witch. He accused me of being a Wendigo. And not only that, he accused me of being with the Del Lobos. You know, people didn't believe Sheriff Hoop, but after a while, people started questioning. You know what? They started choosing, they started choosing a fiction, a fictional book to believe. You know, you and I have a similar interesting story right there. See, myself has been framed for a murder of a man who I did not kill. And now everybody believes the same story because eight men are telling the same one, despite it not being true. So I feel your pain there, ma'am. I understand the feeling of being told you've done something that you did not. They put me in the fort for six months because I was accused of killing the sheriff's dog. Not only that, the doctor in Strawberry told the sheriff that they medically advised the sheriffs to put me in there. I thought that... I, I, I thought... I thought the doctor was my friend, but no one's written anything to me. I haven't gotten a letter from any of them. How about we go inside? I'll buy you a no. drink and we can talk more inside. Instead of, instead of in this heat, I'll listen to your story. Hello, hello. Excuse me? Two whiskeys, one for me and my friend here. From where you left off. Hi. Not one letter from any of them. Not one. But I was left in the fort for six months. And after they let me out this fort, well, they had me break rocks. They yelled at me. They had me work hard hours in the sun. For what? That's what I asked myself, for what? <laughs> I mean, when? Oh, Marie, I'm sorry to hear that. I don't understand the point of it. My question for you now is, what are you going to do moving forward for the future of yourself? Who will Maria be now? saw a hoop, what would you do? Right now, if you walked through those doors, what would you do or say to him? I'd probably throw this glass of whiskey right in his face. Let's get away from me. You ruined your life after all. The friends don't talk to you anymore. You're out here in the desert abandoned to yourself. 
people need friends to get by out there. It ain't easy whatsoever. On your own, when you're lonesome, by yourself. I have an offer for you, ma'am, Maria. Feel free to refuse it, of course, but uh, myself is trying to put together a little group of folks who make a good living for themselves. It's dangerous work, but it's exciting, but it'll give you a new meaning in life. Maybe more than just wasting around here in a saloon in the middle of the desert with rattlesnakes and scorpions everywhere. Have you ever heard of the Silver Bastards by any chance? No. Well, the Silver Bastards is an outlaw gang. I'm looking for fresh blood to join us, but we're more than this gang or outlaws. We're like a family. And we do good by each other. And I think you help me, I help you with your issue about the man who ruined your life. Maybe in the process you can gain new friends and new family. How would that sound to you, Maria? Now, we're not about killing people, but it does happen time to time, but more in self-defense if someone's being an idiot. But we'd like to steal from the government, banks, things like that, trains, so on. Good evening. I'd take care of my own. And you could have a spot in this family, for real. New start, new life, dangering, dangerous, but exciting. How does that sound to you? Oh, he does so nice, but I don't know if it's going to work. It's funny. Well, what about the lifestyle you live right now? Is that for you? Wallowing in the mud, sand and dirt, the hot sun, confused and lost on the lonesome road. I'm giving you an opportunity here, and you can right some wrongs in your past along the way. This conversation, though, stays between the two of us. Now, you can understand, I don't like telling people these kind of things, especially when I don't know them very well. And I do not know you very well, Maria, but I can see you are troubled. And you're in a place of change, you need a place of change, a new life. I'm offering a new life, Maria. I'm staying up at a cabin up the road here to the north. The Lobos have told me that it's fine for me to stay in. So it's abandoned. Place is shot to shit. Holes in the windows. Ain't too bad still. If you change your mind by tomorrow morning, come find me there. If you don't show up there, then I assume you're not interested. And I won't bother you again about this, Maria. You haven't talked tomorrow morning. Sun's going down right now. I'm gonna ride off. Think about it. All right, then you take care. I'm glad you made it, ma'am. Are you all there right now? Hmm. Why well, was. 
just all the way over there behind me. I just simply saw a light over here. Well, seems your coin has flipped. And what is your name now? Elizabeth. That's right, Elizabeth. Would you like to come in? I was just running out there. You're probably walking in. Man, get out of the cold and join in the heat. Now, Elizabeth, I have a question for you. I asked your counterpart, Maria, if she knew there was two coins to yourself. Maybe you're a little more wiser than your other counterparties. Are you aware of this struggle and battle you're at with yourself? What struggle? There's no battle I'm fighting with myself. I simply enjoy the days that come. But you, I walked here just fine. Are you aware of one? Hello. Hmm. Go ahead first, ma'am. You speak. Well, I was just going to say, although I did have some difficulties, a little pain in my chest, it wasn't too bad. And how did you get that pain in your chest, you know? Perhaps sleepwalking. <laughs> well, Elizabeth, I like to think that you are an intelligent, strong woman. Do you remember me from the other day? I do. So I've seen you on different occasions now. One day you are Maria. A lot weaker, a lot more frail, a little more defenseless. In other days, you're Elizabeth. Two different sides of a coin there. And sometimes you go to sleep, Maria wakes up. And sometimes Maria goes to sleep and you wake up. And I think if you've been living with this for long enough, you're probably aware of this. You probably wonder why you sleepwalk then. Am I right to assume that, or are you just playing coy with me? I don't put much thought into it. I just go where the wind takes me. It does sound a bit absurd. So you go up the wind. Why do you think the wind has brought you out here to the hot heat of tumbleweed and New Austin? Hmm. Perhaps the environment around me teaches me how to adapt and cope with the desert. This unforsaken tundra of dead land. You know, when I first came here, I hated it here. But as the days went by, my patience finally blew up. And you know, one day I began to feel grateful. Grateful to have this place break me and learn. As I see it, the desert out here in New Austin will either break you or make you sharper. And it looks like it might be making you sharper then, Miss Elizabeth. Now, your counterpart, your other shadow, your sleepwalker, Maria, told me the reason she came out this way is because all of her friends and family betrayed her because of a man named Hoop spreading lies about you and your shadow. And I heard you spent some time in a fort, and I imagine that you go between personalities. You remember being in a fort, breaking rocks, doing hard labor, living in a cage? I remember men yelling at me to do work with guns pointing to my face. Yeah. How did that make you feel, Elizabeth? Well, it angered me. It sure did, didn't you? Well... I like you more than a Maria, I'll tell you that right now, Elizabeth. I'm trying to build something right now. Something 
I think maybe Elizabeth would be more interested in than Maria. My name is Rocco Rondell. I'm the leader of the Silver Bastards, an outlaw gang. And I need more people who are interested in making themselves something better. And I do well for the ones who are with me. They're like a family. If you have problems, they're my problems. And I'll help you with that. That's a promise. Not only that, when we're robbing banks, people, and things like that, making money, making yourself um, richer, I guess. It's thrilling, it's dangerous, but you can see yourself with better guns, better equipment, better clothing, new horses, and one day we'll just run off to Tahiti with the gang, or whatever wonderful paradise we can find. How's that sound to you? You're making a deal with me. Well, I'm asking if you would like to join a gang. That will give you purpose in life. It'll be dangerous but exciting as well. And anybody you don't like, well, they're going to have to just deal with it. Because you will have friends and family who are like-minded individuals. How does that sound to you? So you assume that I enjoy materials. I join this gang for the benefits. I do not deny the benefits, no. But the material, I will deny. The... The passive friendships that I'll possibly gain from this, I will also deny. But the only thing I request The only thing is I ask you, who are you? I am Riker Lundell, an outlaw. An outlaw first and always. I'm a silver-tongued devil. That's what I am. I want you to explore yourself further. Who are you? Now it's funny, I've been asked the same question once by people a long time ago. I read a lot about this. I am free. I'm wild. And I do as I please. And I ride where I please. Because I do what I enjoy. And I live the lifestyle I choose. I know who I am. They asked me the same question, and this is what I came to as well. I am free. I don't kneel to no government, no man, nothing. I do simply as I please and as I want. And I fight those consequences no matter how bad they is. <laughs> I admire your pride. Well, I'm glad then. Who oh, am I? My name is Elizabeth Sinclair. And I am an individual who questions everything around her. Learns every day. Tries to get closer to the truth. You know I'm not. I seek and seek, but it's the only thing I seek is the questions that contradict the world itself. Hmm. Do you want to make a deal with me? What would your deal entail? Would you accept contradiction? How's it if you don't agree with me, you argue with me about decisions are made and so on? Is that what you're asking? 
Yes. Well, here's the thing about contradiction. You see, it's two sides. Two points of view. Now, if I have an idea, and it ends up being a bad idea, and it's good to have someone say otherwise, then I might see another opening, a different solution to a situation that we can deal with. For example, say we are robbing a bank, and I decide I want to leave the front door. It's a simple situation. You say, that's not a good idea. I, it contradicts what I've said, and said so you should use the back door. I peek through the front door, get shot at real quick. I may have made the mistake and not to listen to you, but now I've learned that maybe the back door was clear, and we've got the back door was clear. Is that a good way to put it? Your contradiction to whatever I think might lead to something. Hmm. Place your hand on the table. I want you to separate, make sure none of your fingers are touching with one another. Keep it nice and spread. All right. You throw a knife at me, I might be a little pissed, just so you know. I have a feeling that's where this is going. <laughs> If I am to accept this deal, I need you to understand the one thing about me. Go on. Slow and steady it goes. That's what I am at first. But I will not deny you disappointment. Because things tend to fall apart. Not because of my ignorance, no. Not because of my taste and failure, no. But as you said, contradiction leaves the person to answer these questions for each other, yes? But sometimes contradiction can lead to a mess. Oh, a mess of questions and answers that just lie upon each other. Hmm. Let me ask you something. Besides contradictions, what is it you want most wandering out there? Oh, God damn it. God damn crazy bitch. Mm. <clears throat> Stab me right in my hand because you want chaos, huh? Huh? I'm trying to offer you something yes. better. You know what? I don't think you're much something I want to play with very much. And I don't appreciate much being stabbed in the goddamn hand, woman. Now give me a goddamn good reason why I shouldn't blow your brains out right here inside this place. Mm. You're a man who responds to anger. You're gonna let me have my bitch pissing me off. No, you you no, you you have a false sense of ideas here. Now chaos 
is Nas in a situation when we have chaos in the inside of one's gang, that leads to separation and poor planning. I don't think I need chaos or someone like you. I much do not appreciate being played with a stab in the hand. How do you know I'm not playing you right now? This is why I know you're not playing me right now. See, I don't play games, woman. And you played a game with me. Now, unfortunately, I wish it was the other way around. You played the wrong game with the wrong person. You, laying there on the ground, bullet in you, could have learned something from me, or gained something. But you are chaos. And I play in chaos, but I do not accept chaos in with me. Ah, <clears throat> fucking hell. You crazy bitch. <sighs> Calm down, you son of a bitch. Looks like you're in bad shape there, ma'am, and you pissed off the wrong man. What the hell? I should have seen this coming, you stabbed me the goddamn man. <laughs> Chaos. Let me be angered by you. You have a phony sense of the world. One thing is you're crazy. Oh, fucking hell. <clears throat> Damn bitch. Maria or Elizabeth, whichever you is, or both is listening now. I gave you an opportunity for something great. I did. It looks like Elizabeth decided she wants to spit in my face and stab me in the hand. Yes, that did anger me. But you seem to be unaware of consequences to one's anger. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
What do you want now? Cling on to life. You very much might die here, ma'am. And what are your last words? Well, ma'am, as I see it right now, Maria or Elizabeth, I'm doing you a favor. This world is cruel towards people like you, inflicted with madness. There are all kinds of madness out there. There's my madness. There's your madness. And there's the law's madness. All mad in our different ways. You are just mad. Now, Nod, if you rather me finish you off right now, if not, I'll leave you to the rodents, the bats, the buzzards, and the scorpions. I don't likely see you surviving this, and I don't care much to save you either way. But if you do survive this somehow, bleeding here in this puddle of blood, in the sun and the heat, if I see you again, I ain't gonna be friendly whatsoever. Because you are madness. And chaos. And I have my own form of madness and chaos as well. Maybe more organized than yours. Well, that's a given considering that you're bad shit crazy. Meanwhile, as a good outlaw does, I'll make good of whatever you have on your person.
know I care that garbage anyways. Lady, maybe the wilderness be kind to you. 